Judge Penny Wolfgang, and welcome to The Big Picture. The COVID-19 crisis has been devastating for businesses, especially restaurants in Western New York and across the country. In a recent decision handed down just this past week, a New York State judge has ruled that restaurants in the orange zone can now resume indoor dining. But is that enough for those locally owned operations to remain viable? I caught up with Paul Santora from Santora's Pizza Pub and Grill on this issue and to find out about a new initiative he has to help others. We are here with Paul Santora for an update on the great news and how we're going to proceed from now on. So now, Paul, congratulations. Thank you very we're much. Really Thank you. Very what happy. does this ruling mean to you and the other restaurant owners? Uh, it, it's funny, just you saying it, I got chills at the <laughs> thought of, uh, of how important uh, this is to us. Um, getting open, we're, 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 we, we're gonna be rolling ahead full steam as quickly as we can. Now, we're still in the yellow zone. Um, until it gets to a certain point uh, through the courts still, but uh, it's a big win, and we're we're very happy. We've we've uh, uh, we've been able to enjoy the fruits of 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 just being open, being closed. It, it's been so sad, and having this large buildings be empty, um, it's just great. And I think we uh, I think we did it professionally. I think the judge was fantastic uh, in listening to our case, and I think our attorneys were great, and uh, we're we're very very pleased with the outcome. Now, how is this going to proceed? Factually, logistically. So, so I believe at this point in time, it, it still has to go to uh, uh, to the court system and and get some finalization on on releasing it from a temporary to a permanent. But uh, um, I, I think we're on the right path. I think uh, and 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 the exciting news uh, that that it moved right to all of Erie County um, uh, turned to a yellow because of uh, the decisions that were made. I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of our whole group. I mean, I think everybody did a great job and, and we're leaders in the community and, and, we, and we set out for a goal and we made it happen. And what happens now opening wise? You know, how do you go about it? When will it happen? When will you be open? So we're open right away. Uh, you know, we're, we're waiting for our liquor license, you know, uh, to, to be at our transit location, which, uh, you know, should be, you know, any day. Um, but, but yeah, we're open, opening the gallery mall. We're there. Uh, we've been prepping all the whole time and, and we're ready to go. We're, we're, we're a good team. Everybody in the restaurant business has great teams and we're, we're very pleased just to be able to have the opportunity to reopen and move forward. And you think the other restaurants will be able to do it as quickly as well? I think so. I think most can, especially the ones that have been open for takeout already. Um, the ones that are closed will take a little longer, I'm sure, but, uh, but, but if, if they can open and, and put dollars in the cash register, they're gonna do it. Well, I was just hearing, which we talked about before, about how many other um, pur purveyors and suppliers are involved. So all of you have to be uh, up on getting your supplies, getting the food, getting all the things that right. go into opening. Correct. So that, <laughs> that was our immediate concern when we got the, you know, uh, is that we, we have to get in touch with our vendors right away and make sure we lock in our food because now you have what? Thousands of restaurants who are placing orders for produce and for food, and um, so uh, so yeah, we had to lock them in right away because uh, they only have a certain amount of stock. They've only been stocking. They just got the thing. So um, I think it'll be good. I think I think we're all going to work together as a team, and whatever they're out of, whatever we have to be out of, it'll just be temporary. What does this mean for the economy? For the, all the people here in Western New York, how important it's, is it's this? The, it's the culture of our area, and, and I believe that, uh, that, we've, that, that that culture of Western New York has been reinstated, and I think it's huge. Uh, tax base, liquor base, um, uh, personal ability to go out and have a drink and have something to eat, like that's mental uh, uh, part of the community as well. So uh, all together, I think it's a good move. Yeah, we think so too. It's really exciting yes. and we're really happy for you. I, I appreciate yeah. it. Your support has been tremendous and I yeah. really appreciate that. And we're going to continue talking about Revive Western New York as soon as we can and as long as we can sure. because it's so important to all yep. of us here in the community and at WBBZ. Paul, 
Explain what your motivation was and your thinking behind starting this organization. Well, I mean, the, the motivation for me is basically we've, my family's been in business in Western New York since 1927. So, you know, the community for us has given back to us for 94 years. And we've, you know, we've positioned ourselves in a, in a pretty strong place in Western New York. And, and we feel that, you know, because of that and because of the support we've gotten for so many years and... I feel the culture that we bring to Western New York and every other home, you know, mom and pop restaurant who, who has built what, what Western New York really is now as far as a brand, as far as a culture and fast, and I'm sorry, and dine-in, I think that needs to be saved. And, and I think that, you know, we have uh, the right amount of contacts. We have the, a, a lot of good people in positions that help us and support our restaurant that we feel that, you know, we, we have that strong uh, following with the vendors and, and, and sponsors and, and everything like that to, to help me move this position forward. And I think that really is, uh, is a driving force. Like, there's nothing out there to help these restaurants. There's nothing going on. There's a couple advocating things here and there for, for what they're doing as far as small businesses. And, and, I, and I'm looking to gear it specifically towards restaurant, because that's been my passion my whole life. So, uh, so that's my concern. And you're talking but, uh, especially about small restaurants, not chains, but local businesses. I think we ought to, or you ought to, bring up or explain the fact that not only the restaurant owner is involved, but the employees and all of the ancillary people that are working for you and with you. Yes, 100%. I mean, and that, you know, and in, in we're, we're developing as we go kind of metamorphosing to, to give the opportunity for the restaurant to run these other programs to help staff as well. Uh, we've got a fill the seats program where people are going to be able to purchase these, uh, you know, kind of like in the stadiums where it's a picture of the person and then the proceeds of that would go to the to the employees. So we're we're running all these different programs, um, you know, and in, in kind of changing and metamorphosing as we go. Uh, we have our first, you know, shoot this uh, this Monday, uh, um, this week coming up will be our first restaurant, and and we're we're trying to do it right. It's going to take a little bit of time, but we want to save these employees, right? So we're hoping that to your point. When we go into like Gabriel's Gate this week, we're we're hoping they bring back a few people, right? They have whether it's long term or not. We're just hoping that we push enough business their way for a week that that yes, yeah, somebody can somebody can take an additional paycheck for the year. Can you imagine what it would be like if you were able to be open now during all of the excitement with the bills, with the with the games? <sighs> I, I, you know, we, we started transforming our brand uh, back 11 years ago at our Millersport location, and that's when the Sabres were hot. And when we first put in our sports bar with, you know, 30 TVs back then, and you couldn't get into our restaurant on a Tuesday night. You know, like the Sabres were just that way, and that's why we created a sports bar. So now we've expanded our brand, and, and we've, we've metamorphosed into where we are today, put in multiple TVs. I mean... To be missing out on this opportunity right now, which is an opportunity we haven't seen since we decided to do this, uh, it is just, it's, I, it keeps me up at night. Now, you, you had this idea of starting the organization and getting everybody involved. What do you want them to do? Like, is there a website? Is there a GoFund program? Yes. What, what do you yeah, plan? there is. Basically, it's Revive Western New York Restaurants is, is our organization. So RevivewestNewYorkRestaurants.org is our website. You can go on there, donate a couple different ways through Facebook. You can donate through GoFundMe. Um, we have uh, a lot of support in the community. Uh, we've got programs for to uh, to support for that week, and then on top of that, we have uh, we actually have uh, if I could talk about it with time, we have uh, four uh, local breweries uh, producing four beers for us called Revive West New York Restaurants, which is uh, Hamburg Resurgence Community Beer Works in 42 North, and uh, uh, through Try It. They're producing a four-pack. Each one has their own individual beer. And uh, uh, we'll be selling that probably as of February 1. It should hit the shelves. Proceeds go to that. And uh, so, so people believe 
I'm getting a lot of phone calls from people wanting to support the cause. Listen, we've been wanting to help restaurants. We've been wanting to do this and that. How do we do it? We don't have a way. How do we contribute? We had a, a bourbon enthusiast group come in and who people are uh, just a local group who want to donate bourbons and, uh, uh, and then raffle them off to raise money to buy gift cards from restaurants. So um, I been, keep waiting to hit this brick wall mm -hmm. and instead it's just snowballing and it's becoming really, really amazing. Now they've tried, uh, the restaurants have tried alternatives to, you know, regular indoor dining, what we're used to, such as pickup or outdoor dining. And I don't know if that works as well or if there are problems with that or what do you think of the, that solutions, those solutions? It, it is a very difficult solution. And, and a lot of these people, especially with the way they do their culinary uh, concept, a lot of it's fresh product every single day. Um, a lot of it is, is keeping inventory and, you know, and then there's, new packaging regulations that they have to come up with, right? Not regulations, but just, just the fact that they have to order paper products now that they really haven't had to do before because they do take out, but not on this grand of scale. So it's, and, and financially, when you have a building, like for an example, this building's like an 11,000 square foot building. So what people don't understand is you still have to pay for the building. You still have to pay for the inventory. You still have to have that. And doing takeout, which is probably five to 10% of your sales, um, that really doesn't, that really doesn't, it, it's, it's a benefit of something, but it's a lot of reasons that, uh, or the main reason why restaurants are closing. Because like I was saying, on our pickup end, you know, we, we, we only have a few weeks left with the outside closed for us for the size. And, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are that way. That's why you're finding a lot of restaurants closing and some of them permanently. So, uh, so it's been, uh, it's been devastating to try to go from, what you do best, which is putting a nice, hot, delicious, homemade plate in front of somebody and then asking somebody to take that same plate home, eat it a half an hour later. It's, it's completely subject to how it's packaged, how long it's been taking, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, a, it's a whole different experience for the restaurant, which, you know, when you get into uh, uh, pizzerias and you're more like your fast food operations, that's what they do every day. So, so they perfect it. So in the fact that they've done so well with that every day and that's their business, they thrive in these cases and that's what makes restaurants more difficult because you're still going out and spending $25 for a takeout meal or $30 for a takeout meal or even $18 for a takeout meal for an individual where you can go get a pizza and feed your family and it's just, it's a different experience eating a, eating a fine dining meal at home at your table. It mentally, it just doesn't do it. You know, you want to be out, you want to socialize. That's what Buffalonians do. You know, so uh, it's it's a very difficult transition for sure. Well, we uh, we at WBBZ TV are partnering on this project and uh, revive Western New York restaurants, and we are totally supporting hometown businesses that are struggling. And so we uh, we are behind you guys 100%. It's been awesome. Everything you're doing for us is great. And we thank you so much. And on behalf of the, the, the other businesses that you are trying to help and the other companies and the employees and all the people here in Western New York, thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I, I get a lot out of it. I really do. Thanks.